this next video, we're going to look at some basic natural language programming best practices for getting started authoring tests in Dynamics 365. And particularly what we're going to look at is how you can start creating various records and interacting with things like form fields. So with your Dynamics 365 project already loaded in, where you'll have put in your environment details, for instance, your URL, username and password, you can go ahead and let's, in our journey here, We've got our navigate to the URL and then our login steps. Let's hover at the bottom and create a new journey, which is going to be to let's create an account. Now, if we go ahead and run that journey, that's going to go ahead and log in for us using our username, password, and then things like the OTP key, if that has been configured for your instance. Okay, so with the login performed, what we want to be able to do is we want to go and interact to create accounts. So if we add a checkpoint, let's say load accounts module. So in Virtuoso, we're actually using a live bot here, which is going to look at the web page. So it's going to look at the DOM structure of the application. And sometimes what we need to do is provide some context about where on the page we want to interact with. So the first thing we're going to do is say, look for and then we want to look for something unique in the menu bar here. So let's say my work. So that tells us the bots are going to work on this side of the page. There we go. And so without providing anything more specific than the label we saw on the screen, if we click on the step and go to the screenshot, we can see that it actually interacted with that element. So you didn't need to set up a my work object or put in selectors. You just literally put in the label or a hint of what we see on the screen. So then the next thing we want to do is go ahead and click on accounts. So we write the natural language click and in speech marks, we put the hint or the label we want to interact with. And when we click on save, then there you go. It's gone ahead and interacted with the account. Now, because we can see the page has loaded, now we're actually uh, dynamically looking for network traffic. So as the page loads, we're basically waiting for it to load. But it sometimes is a best practice for, let's say, putting in a wait for, and let's look for my active accounts. And what that does, it puts in a dynamic wait, either wait 20 seconds or as soon as my active accounts loads. So with that done, what that also does, it helps the bots to also locate on this part of the screen. So it's moved from the sidebar into the main piece here. So the next thing we want to do is click on the new button. And so literally we can just write click and in speech marks new. And when we do that, you can see it goes ahead and loads the new page. So again, we might say, wait for new account. And then really what we can do is start then in here, for example, we wanna be able to interact with the form fields. And you can see there's an asterisk where we wanna create the account name. So the sequence of steps to be able to interact with form fields is pretty straightforward. It's to say, you can see here, the fields aren't actually activated. So the first step is to click account name and note that I just need to change that to a capital A. We should make it the same uh, uh, case as we have here. And then when I click on save, you'll see it goes ahead and it activates the account name there. And then what I could do, I could write, I don't know, uh, James Co. in and we're going to say account name because that's the field name. And when we do that, you can see it goes ahead and writes in the field there. Okay, and with that done, if I just actually scroll down, you see this is actually a live browser window. You can see there are no more fields that are mandatory, so I could simply then just come in and say click, save, and close. And by doing that, we'll see that it goes and saves the record, and then we could come back in, and again, we could say wait for my active accounts and then what we could do to validate that we can see the record we created which is james co we could say write james co in filter by keyword so basically we want to interact with the search box up here and then that will go and write in the box there and then we could press enter to perform the search so you can see we can do key actions and then it will go search on the page. And so then we could say, look for link James Co. 
And the reason for doing that is that this is a link and we can see we've got James Co here as well. So we're specifying that we want to look for a link with James Co. And let's just let that run. And then again, by clicking on these steps, we can see the screenshot and see that, yep, it's interacted with that element. So you can see how we've just gone and live authored using the uh, pre-built steps here with the login. We've just gone ahead and authored some simple steps to be able to interact with some form fields, buttons, but also then go ahead and perform some, whether it's mouse actions or some dynamic weights, and then some assertions to be able to validate that data has been created. So you can see the speed at which you can go and create those. And by clicking on I'm done here, what is actually happening in the background is that Virtuoso is automatically identifying and populating all available element selectors. So for each of these elements, whether XPass or IDs or class names, so we automatically build the model of those elements. And again, when you run these tests, just be aware that if there are changes, which in Dynamics there are changes to the element structure, then we automatically heal those tests. So for example, if there are class name changes, then Virtuoso will automatically heal that with it without you needing to maintain those. So that's just some basic steps for getting started with some best practice natural language programming steps for Dynamics. We have additional videos about how to perform additional interactions with things like icons or menu bars or where there are, let's say, multiple elements with the same type on the screen. That's covered in another video.